I want to thank Allah for all of the speakers that we've had. I'd like to thank Allah for you who came out to be with us tonight, um, today for, for a few moments. I am going to spend a few moments talking about shaitan, the devil, Satan. Everybody speaks about him. It's in the Torah, it's in the Injil, it's in the Quran. Everybody speaks about the devil. But I want to talk about four entities. Number one, Allah. Because if you're going to talk about shaitan, you have to talk about Allah, the creator. One day I'm sitting in my office and I'm reading this ayat from Quran. And there is not a leaf that falls except Allah knows it. So, wow. So I leave my office. And I walk one long block. And as I'm walking, I'm thinking about this ayat from Quran. There's not a leaf that falls except Allah knows it. And I took a look on the ground and I saw thousands of leaves. I did some research and found out there's some. Three trillion trees on the earth. Some of them having as many as 350,000 leaves. And you mean to tell me that Allah knows every leaf that falls? A skeptic may say, how could you verify it? How do you know that Allah knows every leaf? A believer said, we believe in the Quran. Allah said it, we believe it. I ain't going to argue with you. You want to, I ain't going to argue with you. I ain't going to argue with you. I accept it. And I'm saying how wonderful he is. Number two, I want to talk about us. Who we are as human beings because we are the envy of the universe. Mankind is the, is the envy of the universe. And you know the funny thing about it? You know who we are? Johnny come lately. Mankind is Johnny come lately. Everything was here by the time man was created. Everything was here. The universe is there. The earth is there. The angels are there. The jinn are there. Everything is there. And then here come Johnny come lately. Human beings. And even though human beings are the Johnny come lately, we're the last thing in the universe. Allah makes us special. So he says in Quran, لَقَدَ قَرَنَّ بَنِي Adam." We have honored the children of Adam. Who? You. And Nasu Kuluhum Benu Adam or Adam in Torab. Mankind, all of them are the children of Adam, and Adam was created from the dust. Would you like to see a spectacle in the universe? I want you to picture this. Sheikh, how many angels do you think in existence? How many? Countless. And when Allah ordered the angels to bow down to Adam, God's first man, every angel bowed down to Adam. Did Jabril bow down to Adam? The angel of death? The angel of the mountains, all of them. How incredible. What about this man? How many people on earth? About seven billion? Seven billion people on the earth. 
And every one of them have a unique fingerprint. Our fingerprints are not the same. Number two, there is an imam in Medina who's famous for imitating 100 of the best reciters of the Quran. I met him. And when you hear him recite the Quran, you would think it's your favorite reciter. And even though he has that ability, every human being have a unique voice. Experts can tell. Number three. Shabi Ali, he was looking at my notes one day, he said, Imam Siraj, how you read that? Don't be making fun of my handwriting. I don't like that. And really, did you know every human being have a unique handwriting? Experts can tell. And the last one, maybe you didn't think about. Every human being have a unique smell. No two humans smell the same. If you don't believe me, go to Surah to Yusuf. Yaqub said, I smell the scent of Yusuf. Everybody have a unique smell. How do you know it? When a prisoner escapes, Allah reveals in Quran, Alam tarao anna Allah sakhara lakum ma fi samawati wa ma fi al Don't you see? Allah has subjected in the heavens and earth everything for you, man. And who do we have? We have dogs who have a sense of smell millions of times more sensitive than human beings. So all you have to do is take a shirt, let the dog smell the shirt, and that dog will go exactly to the owner of the shirt because our smell is unique. How many of you ever been to Australia? Sheikh Jamal, Shabir, I love Australia. You know something about Australia? Whenever, when you land in Australia, there's a sign, I don't know if you saw it. The sign said, warning, you may not want to go back home. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man, Australia, you got to go to Australia. So me and my wife, we get off the plane, go down the baggage claim to get our luggage. And we noticed that there was a security man smelling my wife's luggage. And I know that the security man with the dog is looking for something, one of three things. Number one, they're looking for drugs. So I started looking at my wife. <laughs> or they're looking for explosives, I started walking away from my wife. <laughs> or they're looking for food, because you can't bring food into Australia. And sure enough, my wife had in her luggage food. What am I saying? I'm saying this Johnny come lately human beings are special. Whatever you think of yourself, black, brown, red, yellow, white, whatever your color is, your nationality, your religion, Allah made human beings special. Indeed, the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, خَلَقَ Allah Adam ala suratihi. And Allah created Adam in his image. Don't go crazy. لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ shay. There is nothing like him. Allah is special category. You have Allah, you have uh, the human being. Number three, angels. Part of our faith is to believe in angels. And even though we don't see them, we believe in them. The founding fathers of my country, the United States of America, were religious people. The fourth president of the United States, James Madison, said, if men were angels, there would be no need of government. And if 
angels govern men, neither internal or external controls would be necessary. Why? Angels are special. As our sister said earlier, they always listen to the command of Allah the Almighty. But man is different. Man makes many mistakes. And one of the things that we have to realize, مَا خَلَقْتُ jinna wal insa illa Allah has only created jinn and human beings to obey him. That's why he created us. He created us to obey him. And there's one more. Ah, the jinn. The jinn. These are the creatures that Allah created to obey him. And one of them is special. And we can debate this, and, I, and I've thought about it. I know Dr. Jamal and, and others, you know, Shabir Ali and others, you know, we can, we can discuss that. I try to read between the lines. And I've come to the conclusion that Iblis was a special jinn having the ability to be one of the most special creatures in the universe. But he blew it. He blew it. When given a chance, Allah never gives us a commandment that we're unable to do. If he does, it would be unfair. Why would he tell Iblis to bow down to Adam if he didn't have the ability to bow down? Now look at this. I wish I could, you know, they know I like to walk around. I, I, I can't help myself. I don't know how to stand still. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, and we move around. I am a nightmare for the cameraman. Look at him, see how he ran over there? Watch this. You looking at him? Hmm? Hey, look at this. Allah test us. وَلَا تَقْرَبَا هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةَ فَتَكُونَ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ Oh Adam, you and your wife live here in this garden and eat everything in the garden except that one tree. Don't go near that one tree. That's the commandment. That's easy, right? You got the whole garden, just that one tree? Come on, man. That's easy. I could do that. So I'm trying to imagine, you know, uh, Adam in the garden. And look at the tree, say, I can't go near that tree. Mm -mm, not me. Shucks. That interesting looking tree. But I ain't going to go near it. Somewhere along the line, he goes and eat from the tree. Can I ask you a personal question? How many of you, and I want you to be honest, think if Allah gave you the commandment, don't go near the tree, how many of you believe you would not have gone near the tree? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. How many of you think you would have gone and eaten from the tree? Raise your hand. What? Dr. Jamal Badawi? No way. No, no, no. And you know what? All you got to do is think. Every one of us commits sin, including the one standing before you. Sin that we know is against the commandment of Allah. 
and yet we do it. And that's the last one, the shaitan. It's a theological mistake, I think, to say that Allah created Iblis to disobey him. Yes, he created them, us to make decisions. Consider this conversation. Allah asks Iblis, مَا مَنْ أَكَالَ أَلَا تَسْجُدَ إِذْ أَمَرْتُكَ Allah gave the commandment of every angel to bow down to Adam and also Iblis. Iblis refused to do it. Allah asked the question, what prevented you from bowing down when I ordered you to? Listen to what he said. Ana khairu min hu khalaktani. Stop. Khalaktani. You created me. You created me. You, Allah, you created me from fire. And you created man from teen, mud. Kala Rabbi. Kala Rabbi, my Lord. Kala Rabbini. Fa'andirni ila yomid yubasun. Oh Allah, give me time until the day that they are raised up. You created me, my Lord. Give me time until they are raised up. Is he a believer? How many say yes, he's a believer? So we have two scholars different. No, abstain. Oh, he ain't abstaining. I know him. How many say he's a believer? Raise your hand. Oh, not a believer. I'm sorry, not a believer. Come on, man. So are you asking me to answer? Of course I want you to answer. Yeah, well, I would say he knows that Allah exists and Allah is his Lord, but, uh, but he's not assenting to that. Abba was stuck by what can I mean at Kafirin? He disobeyed and he was a Kafir. You know why? Because Allah is not asking us the mere existence that he exists. He's not asking us that. He wants something more than that. He wants us to worship him. He wants us to obey him. So don't give me your platitudes that yeah, 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 he exists. No, there's something more that he expects from us. How many of you believe in shaitan? Raise your hand. Believe that he exists. <laughs> you see, so we always have a wise guy in the audience. You see? You see, the key is never say you believe in shaitan. You don't say, I meant to be shaitan. I meant to be lah. Or rasulihi. Wal malaika. You believe in Allah, the angels, but you don't believe in shaitan. You bear witness to the existence of shaitan. And there's a difference between believing in shaitan and recognizing the existence of shaitan. You don't believe in him. He's real. Shaitan is real. So from the very beginning, some innocuous commandment, just don't go near the tree. Ain't no big deal. I'm going near the tree. Ain't no big deal. Really? Do you see what happened as a result of going next to, to the tree? You see something about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Every commandment that Allah give us is for our good. If we do it, it's for our good. And if we do the wrong thing, the disobedient thing, if we do it, we're going to be hurt by it. Now, cigarettes. I'm going to ask you a fatwa. I want an audience. I want a fatwa from the audience. How many of you say smoking cigarettes is halal? And don't be afraid. We're not going to do nothing to you. If you think smoking is halal, raise your hand. Because some of you, when you leave here, you're going to go back there and smoke. 
I, I want to know if you're smoking because you think it's halal or you know it's haram. So how many think smoking cigarettes is halal? Raise your hand. How many think it's haram? MashaAllah. If you read the Islam, uh, 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 Fatah Islamiyya, these are the great ulema, all of them say smoking cigarettes is haram. Consider this. The uh, cigarette industry spent $8.2 billion advertising their product. $8.2 billion. A lot of money, right? If they spend $8.2 billion advertising their product, well, how much money did they make? They must make money if you're going to spend $8.2 billion to advertise, trying to get people to smoke. Then you must expect to make a lot of money. You spend $8.2 billion, you will go out of business if you don't make money. So how much money did they they make $258 billion. Is smoking cigarettes legal in UK? What's the age limit? What's the age limit? 18, same in the United States. No? 15? 16. Okay. In the United States, 90% smokers start before the age of 18. Alcohol industry spend $2 billion a year to advertise their product. How much do they make? Over $200 billion. It makes sense. They do it because they want to make money. That's the motivation. They do it to make money. Illegal drugs. Do you know the people on the planet Earth spend more money on illegal drugs than they do on food, clothing, housing, education, and health? Illegal drugs. There was a man six feet tall, my height, was on every kind of drug you can imagine and he was on drugs for 30 years. He got sick and went into the hospital. He had gotten down to 60 pounds. Six feet tall, 60 pounds in the hospital. And the doctor told him, you better call your family members, you're not gonna make it through the night. He asked the doctor to leave his room he said, I want to talk to somebody who knows. And he said that day he called on Allah. That was about 25 years ago. If you look at him today, he's a picture of health. How do I know it? He's in my community. Two years ago, he said, Imam Saraj, I want you to come with me to my, uh, you know, they call it um, being sober for 20 something years and I went with him. He was so proud that he, Allah blessed him to stay off of drugs. It makes sense. People sell drugs to make money, sell cigarettes to make money. But in my conclusion, this fella, shaitan, he doesn't do it to make money. Why would you bother Adam in the garden and stop him from obeying Allah instead of helping him not to go near the tree you encourage him you whisper pss, 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 pss. go and do the very opposite of what Allah has commanded. commanded why? and this is the crazy thing this is my conclusion you know, shaitan is really petty. He's miserable. His whole objective in life is just to get us human beings to go into the fire with him. 
He's making dawah. You know they say misery loves company? No big goal, no big deal. I'm doing that so that I don't be in a fire by myself. Petty. I would like to call to the stand, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to call to the witness stand, Shaitan. Will you hear his testimony? You don't want to hear his testimony? You don't want to hear the testimony? Tell me why. Tell me. He's a, he's a liar. Why should we want to hear the testimony of Shaitan? It all depends on timing. Timing is everything. You know the last words of Fir'aun before he died? Inna min al muslimin I'm one of the Muslims. Al-an, now? You want to do it now? You want to believe now? You want to believe in the God of the children of, of uh, Ben Israel? You want, to, you want to believe now? It's too late. Let me tell you something about shaitan. There's some clues here and there. The next time, go to Kitabu Iman, Muslim Hadith. Shaitan now is a private moment. He says, whenever the son of Adam recites sajda in the Quran and he prostrates, shaitan runs away in seclusion, yabki, crying, woe is with me. He was given the commandment to prostrate and he prostrated. Follow Jannah. For him is Jannah. And I was given the commandment to prostrate and I refuse. Wali and Nar. For me is the hellfire. Why you want to call Shaitan? Because Qala Shaitan Lemma Qudi al Amura. Ah, that's it. Now it's been uh, the affair, now it's open, it's finished. No more pretense. You don't have to trick no more. You don't have to lie no more. Allah promised you a promise of truth. And he kept his promise. I promise you, and I deceived you, or I broke my promise. Don't blame me. Blame yourself. You have, I have no power over you. I just gave you dawah. I called you, and here you come. So, brothers and sisters, what are we going to do against shaitan? I leave you with two things, two recommendations. Number one is the remembrance of Allah. To fight against shaitan is the remembrance of Allah. Can I be honest with you? We all have our trials. You know what one Muslim told me? He said, Imam Siraj, if Allah bless me to go to Jannah, all I want to do is smoke me some weed. <laughs> you, know, you know what weed is? <laughs> and this person was an Imam. We got weakness. Sisters, can you give me one minute? I want to talk to the brothers. Just one minute, okay? Brothers, I ask you a question. They can't hear us. This is between you and I. I want an honest answer. How many of you like and are attracted to women? Raise your hand. Okay. That one brother not raising your hand, I'm going to talk to you after the meeting. <laughs> Did you raise your hand? Huh? Oh, you're not in the audience. Hey, man, listen, I understand. I have not left on you a trial greater for the man than the women because of the natural attraction. We can't, ain't nothing wrong with that. 
No, Allah created you for that. There is a natural attraction. When these young sisters, when they were young and they were playing ropes, you know, they'd be jumping the ropes, right? And somebody said, look at that boy. They said, yeah, yeah, a boy, yeah. But they ain't saying that no more. <laughs> they said it when they were real young. They ain't saying that no more because there's a natural attraction. Allah created us like that. But this is the thing. Since we're the slaves of Allah, then we do it for Allah. La taqrubu zina, don't go near zina. You young men, I know, I know what you like, I know it. But tilka hududu Allah, la ta'daduha, these are the boundaries of Allah, don't go past them. To what Allah has said, said do, stay away from the haram because if you don't, you will harm yourself. May Allah bless every one of you to make it to Jannah. May Allah forgive all of you your sins. Because we commit sin, we're going to commit sin. But Allah is so great. And one of the most striking things in the hereafter, Allah will say, Shafa'atil malaika, the angels had interceded. And the prophets. The angels have interceded. The, the believers have interceded. The prophets have interceded. There's none left. And then the prophet said, Allah will take a handful of people out of hell that never did any good and put them in Jannah. Now, these two scholars here, I'm going to ask your opinion. A handful with Allah, how many? How many? Must be countless. How many? We don't know. You mean to tell me Allah is going to take an appreciable number out of hell and never did any good? Allah does what he pleases. You can commit sin from the heavens to the skies or sin the size of the earth and you come to Allah not associating anything with him. Allah can forgive us our sins. Ask Allah's forgiveness. Ask Allah, he will forgive you. But you know, do it now. Don't wait, my young brother. So I got a long life to live. Nobody knows. Nobody knows in what land they're going to die. Nobody knows what they earn tomorrow. No one knows what land they're going to die. So do it now. May Allah bless you. Bless the Zaman family, all of you. The people of the sound, I give you a hard time. May Allah bless all of you. Jazakallah khaira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.